So Chicago Blackhawks fans are going to be hearing a lot of that in the future. If you guys somehow haven't heard, they won the first overall pick in the 2023 draft lottery, giving them the right to draft generational prospect Connor Bedard. So I figured now that we know where Connor Bedard's going, unless he pulls in Eric Lindros, it is time to do a career simulation with him in NHL 23, seeing how good his career ends up. Does he end up being a better player than Crosby or McDavid? That's what we're going to find out today. And as you guys can see here, look at this. A lot of results are in. Chicago's actually picking first overall. So I took control of Arizona, thinking they're the worst team. Hopefully they finish last. I'll just trade my pick to Chicago. As it turned out, Chicago actually won the lottery, just like they did in real life. So I don't even have to worry about that. Also, too, Pittsburgh here wins the Stanley Cup, which is pretty funny since, of course, they didn't even make the playoffs. And now check this out, guys. They just simmed through the first round of the draft. Of course, Connor Bedard there going first overall, the Blackhawks. The Ducks actually take Leo Carlson at two over Adam Fantilli, who went to the Ottawa Senators. Actually made a trade with the Ducks so they could still be picking two like they're in real life. Then it took Zachary Benson with the Coyotes picks as they're picking six in real life. So there's a good chance that's who they'll be taking, especially since they already got Connor Geeky, his teammate in Winnipeg. Then Columbus here takes Will Smith, passing on Matthew Michkov, who actually goes sixth there to the Montreal Canadiens. And in real life, the Montreal Canadiens had the fifth overall pick. I know all the Montreal fans hoping to get Michkov. Well, they land him here in this draft. Detroit there, Dvorsky, Jet Sala. Crystal also goes to the Blackhawks. Are you kidding me? So the Blackhawks not only take Connor Bedard first overall, they also land his best buddy, Andrew Crystal, at nine. I wasn't sure how they had this ninth overall pick, but it's actually the Tampa Bay pick. Tampa simmed that poorly in this first year sim. I'm not sure how that happened. Chicago was set up pretty nice now with Bedard and Crystal out of the first round. All right, guys, we're at the start of Bedard's first year. As you can see, the Blackhawks penciled into the second line center spot. He's actually playing behind David Krejci, who apparently doesn't retire. And not only does he not return to Boston, and be signed to the Blackhawks, I'm curious. They paid him five million bucks there for one year. I should point out too, guys, if you're wondering what Bedard's stats look like. So using my roster, he's 85 overall out of the draft. High franchise potential. Bunch of X factors that I feel fit him pretty well. Obviously, he's got to have the shock and awe zone ability. He's all about that toe drag release. I'm um, also too in regards to like his individual attributes there. Obviously, he has a great shot on him. Good playmaker too. Physical is definitely like you know his worst spot. Only two and a half stars there. Decent defensively. Um, solid offense awareness. Already 90 poise because you know he's gonna be a superstar in this league. So. Uh, very excited to see how he plays here. He's got Jonathan Days on his right wing. So he actually returns to Chicago, which not happening in real life. Also, the fact that they don't have him playing center is very, you know, interesting, I'd say. Uh, third line there. Actually, the entire bomb stick is pretty much the same. But Chicago here actually signs Kalak Postar to be a fourth line left winger. Defensively, Korchinski there on the top pair with Seth Jones. He's up to an 83 already. They also signed Dumoulin. Playing him with Murphy. You then have Zaitsev and Jones rounding out that defense. Goaltending wise, they actually bring in Varlamov here, which is a pretty good get for them. And then David Riddick as the backup. So two new goaltenders. Team's definitely, you know, better than it was last season. Still not really looking like a playoff team, but time will tell. All right, guys, we're nothing in year one. As you can see, the Blackhawks are picking seventh overall in the draft. They actually dropped down a spot. So didn't have a great season, but they do get a player that can help build around Bedard. Um, they're also picking 16 via Tampa Bay. So Tampa Bay um, has not been doing so well in this sim, which is really weird. They're like a high rated team. Boston Bruins there when the Stanley Cup, so they kind of, I guess, get revenge for the first round exit in real life this year. As you guys can see here, Bedard's rookie season, he was actually a point per game, exactly 82 there in 82. Uh, he's grown to a 91 overall after his first season. Totally forgot to show you guys too, but at the draft, he had 132 points in 72 games playing for Regina. And I think the craziest thing about this, even though that's super impressive, is the fact he actually did better in real life. He had more points in less games played. And I mean, that just shows you how good he is. Like the 85 overall, video game version of him tearing up the junior league which is all like 60s didn't put up as many points as he did in real life this season i'll show you guys the awards here too obviously we're just curious to see whether or not bedard won that calder i can see Tate thompson there taking home the art ross in the heart so big year for him mccarr james norris and there you go bedard does win the calder trophy as we expected i don't think he gets any other hardware here in his rookie season he does not, but I definitely see him winning some Marisha Shards in his future. All right, guys, we're going to start Bedard's second season. As you can see, he's playing first line center there between Lucas Reichel and Frank Nazar. So a bit of a young gun line there. If you guys forgot, Nazar was actually drafted in the first round of the 2022 draft by the Blackhawks with Kevin Korchinski. Second line here, Silver Perk, Pavelski at Athens CU. Pavelski there is now 40 years old. So they got like the old vet uh, tutoring the young budding superstar in Bedard. That's kind of funny. Uh, Kappen on the team now. Tazed him one of the third line. Trocek's a pretty big get. 
Defensively, you still have Kurczynski's Jones on the top pair. Kurczynski's actually higher rated than Jones now. You then have Caleb Jones, Zaitsev, so second pair, with Regula and Vlasic on the bottom pairing. So a couple of young defensemen um, actually making the jump to the NHL. Varlamov there is dropped in rating to an 82, probably because Blackhawks had such a terrible season last year. So the Blackhawks can be a playoff team? Probably not, but... We'll see what happens here. For another 2025 draft, guys, and as you can see, the Sharks that are picking first overall, which means they're getting Michael Misa. And you might notice Chicago Blackhawks are not listed there as they actually made the playoffs. Did not win the Stanley Cup, that went to the Minnesota Wild. As you can see here, they actually finished second in the Central Division with 91 points, which I think is pretty impressive. Uh, you know, just one year after drafting Connor Bedard. In terms of the playoffs, they unfortunately were swept by the Dallas Stars. So uh, Bedard does not get a playoff win, but at least, you know, he got some experience making the playoffs. As well, too, guys, check this out. In only his second year, Bedard already hit the 100-point mark. Are you kidding me? Also put up over 50 goals with a 52-48 and 48 stat line, plus 25 on the year as well. So uh, what an incredible sophomore season for him. McDavid gets the Dart Ross, McKinnon Hart. So um, probably not winning anything. Lady Bing was his best chance. Frank Nazar there actually wins a Calder. So back-to-back -back Calder trophies for Chicago Blackhawks organization. And I was curious to you guys to see where he finished the entire league. So we gave it their first 118 points. But Dart was fifth though. So I feel like pretty soon we're gonna have the two Connors going back and forth in terms of like who's leading the league in points. All right guys, we're at the start of Bedard's third season. And are you kidding me? He's already 96 overall, two seasons into his NHL career. And as you can see, Chicago still ran that young gun first line with Bedard in the middle and Lucas Reichel and Nazar on the wings. And on the second line, you can see they got Ivan Demidov who they actually drafted with the seventh overall pick 2024. So he'll probably be a good player for them. And with him, they got Krejci and Tavares. So they signed Tavares after his contract with the Leafs was up. Couple of veterans there. They also bring in Jacob Verana, Trotex still there, Captain Owen Tippett, Nico Sturm, Rasmussen. I mean, this team's starting to look, you know, a lot better defensively. Korchinski Jones is still their top D pair. They got Larson, Nolan Allen. He finally makes the jump to NHL. Jake McKay back on the team, playing with Regula there. Goaltending, Bobrovsky actually comes in. 85 overall at 37 years old. And Iljevic there is backing him up. Also, two guys with Jonathan Taze no longer in the team. I was curious if maybe they gave the C but Darb, but as you can see, he's only got an A right now. So still, I mean, you know, two years into his NHL career, already rocked an A. Not too bad. But he's definitely not the youngest captain in NHL history like Crosby or Landeskog were. And we're now in the third season, guys. And look at this. It's a 2026 draft, so the Gavin McCown lottery, and Toronto jumps from 8 to 1 via the Cummins Blue Jackets. Nasher hates to see this. I was actually hoping, so Chicago missed the playoffs this year. It would have been really cool if they drafted first overall, taking McCown who of course is Bedard's cousin on top of that he's also looking like he could be a generational player so if they got him would have been pretty cool still though they pick 11 as you can see there the Avs win the Stanley Cup this season and Chicago didn't have a bad season but it wasn't great either 83 points there so yeah they're like a middling team and Bedard regressed a little bit he's back down to a point per game but still through his first three seasons in NHL he has yet to put up less than a point per game which I would say is pretty impressive plus minus wasn't as good this year so I think just the Blackhawks team as a whole didn't play as well. As you can see, yeah, he actually dropped an overall by one. I'm very curious to see, too, what his contract's going to be looking like. And now this is kind of surprising, guys. So taking a quick look at the awards, as I mentioned, Avs there won the Stanley Cup. And they did it without Mikko Rantanen. He's actually on the Dallas Stars now. And he won the Art Ross Trophy and the Hart Trophy his first year with Dallas. I believe, too, he won the Ted Lindsay. I was just looking through to see if Bedard maybe got something, but... He did not. And so it's down the start of Bedard's fourth season, guys. As you can see, that young gun first line has not been broken up. Reichel, Bedard, Nazar is still together. As I mentioned, Bedard has dropped in rating by one, but um, after his first three years in the NHL, so his entire entry-level D, I wanted to show you what his attributes are looking like. 99 offense awareness and poise. Puck skills there are all 95. His shot's incredible. 96 slap shot accuracy. 97 wrist shot accuracy. Really good skating. Even defensive stats there. 93 D awareness. 92 stick check. Physical has come along a little bit. I think it's, you know, decent enough for him to play in the NHL. And as you guys can see here, the new contract, $10.3 million for the next seven years. In real life, assuming the salary cap keeps going up, I would guess he gets something like $14 million for eight years. But, so that's definitely a great contract for Chicago. Uh, defensively here, Korchinski and Jones in that top pairing. Korchinski now a 90. Alan Larson, Rinzel, Melendijk, and then goaltending here, Kamaso is actually making the jump to the NHL now. He was drafted second round 2020, supposed to be their goalie of the future. And along with him, they actually signed Stuart Skinner, which is kind of surprising. A6 overall, uh, they gave him 6.7 for the next three years. So uh, this team, I think, is looking a lot better than last season's team. Um, I should mention too, totally forgot to point out on forwards, uh, Andrew Crystal here, now in the NHL as well. So a ton of young players make their NHL debut. As you can see, he's on the second line there with Tavares and Krejci. Uh, Demidov there's an 85 now. They still got Trocek. Tippett's up to 84. Also too, guys, curious to see if Chicago finally gave Bedard the C, but as you can see, still wearing an A. While I was on the edit player screen, I made sure to give him number 98. For whatever reason, the game gives him 16 in franchise, even though, you know, he wears 98 for the Regina Pats. I don't know why they get the World Junior number. If you guys are curious, the new captain of the Chicago Blackhawks is actually Seth Jones, so I just look at him wearing that C. So now in the fourth season, guys, as you can see there, the Minnesota Wild won the Stanley Cup. Look at the individual awards. McDavid takes home the Air Rush Trophy. 
Uh, just looking to see if a dart potentially won something, but uh, does not look to be the case. Now, as you can see here, he actually had a very solid season, 98 points, again hitting the 50 goal mark. Unfortunately for him, though, the Blackhawks were not very good this year again, uh, did not make the playoffs, actually finished last place there in the Central Division. So, uh, they'll be getting a high pick. Unfortunately, we're in 2027 draft, so it's all made up players at this point. Hopefully, though, they land a stud to help Bedard. And look at this guy, Chicago legend and longtime captain, Jonathan Tace, finally calls it quits, 39 years old there. All right, guys, so that's the start of the fifth season. As you can see, the first lines actually changed. Andrew Crystal there playing with his buddy, Connor Bedard, on that first line. And then you actually got Demidov there on the right wing. Second lines, Tavares, Nazar, and Reichel. And then defensively here, you got Korczynski and Jones on the top pair. Jones still has three years left on that big contract. You then have Larson and Simichov on the second pairing, Melendyke and Renzel on the bottom pair. Renzel, I think, was also in the 2022 draft. And then in goal, still Skinner and Camaso. All right, guys, we're now at year five here. And as you can see, the Blackhawks did make the playoff. Unfortunately, though, they get swept again in round one. So Bedard still has yet to win a playoff game, which honestly is kind of funny. Maybe he's cursed or something. Um, we'll take a look here at the awards. Tampa Bay, you can see there, won the Stanley Cup. Barkov actually with the Art Ross, Matty Veneers with the Hearts, Gavin McKenna on the Maple Leafs with the Calder Trophy, still can't believe they landed him. And look at this, Connor Bedard got a Selkie Trophy. That is pretty cool, did not expect him to win that one honestly, but that is why we check the awards every year. And honestly guys, I'm really curious how this game decides who wins the Selkie Trophy. I've heard some people say it's face-off win. As Bedard here at 89 points, a so pretty solid season, only plus 8 though. Um, let's see, so face-off wins, 13-34. And Bedard's not even on the first page. Uh, Faceoff's taken, Bedard's also not on the first page, so uh, yeah, I'm not exactly sure, like I said, how the game figures that one out, but still really cool that he got that award. And also, too, guys, since I didn't show it, Chicago Blackhawks had 90 points this year. So there's a matchup there with Minnesota. Hopefully soon, they'll get their first playoff win. Also, too, guys, some more big retirement news. Alex Ovechkin there retires to the Buffalo Sabres. I can't believe he left Washington. Uh, 1,940 points, as well as 1,076 goals. So he breaks Gretzky's goal record. You've also got Stammer retiring with the Capitals. Giroux there, Tarasenko, Patry, Latang, and Evander Kane. So it looks like the Penguins are a bit of a retirement home this season. All right, guys, so another start of the sixth season. As you can see here, the first line is the same as last year. Crystal, Bedard, and Demidov. I feel like that's very solid. But Chicago's now got Raquel on the second line, playing with Nazar and Reichel. Defensively, Korchinski, Melendai. Seth Jones is gone. Very interesting. Skinner, Kamaso, still the two goalies. So see this team get back in the playoffs, maybe win a game. And so we're now at the end of year six here. I'm showing you the draft lottery results as Chicago again misses the playoffs. But they're picking fifth overall. So maybe finally get together with another top five pick. You can see the centers there actually won the Stanley Cup. 98 points on the year. I mean, that's not bad at all. Pushing 100, 45 goals there, plus 19. You definitely, you know, cannot blame him for Chicago's failures. Like, they just are not building a good enough team around him. Uh, again, last place there in the division, 72 points. Like, that is unbelievable. Awards, you never know. Maybe wins another Selkie. That'd be pretty cool. Dreisel, Art Ross, and the Hart still on Edmonton. No word for Bedard. And now speaking of retired players, guys, look at this. Sid the Kid retires with the Florida Panthers. 2,000 points over his career. Patty Kane there actually stays with the Rangers. Bergeron returns to Boston. Marchand goes to Pittsburgh. Uh, yeah, Tavares there in Detroit. Krejci was still with us, but finally calls it quits. And I look at this, guys. It started year seven, and Conor Bedard's still wearing the A. I thought maybe they would have given him the C since Seth Jones no longer on the team. I was actually looking, you know, last year to see who the captain was. Couldn't find anybody in the top players, but this time I was determined. I looked through the entire roster, and for whatever reason, Chicago decided to give Paul Ludwinski the C. No offense to him, but like, how does this guy get the C and not Conor Bedard? And now for the seventh year, guys, the first line remains the same. Bedard, they're still in 96. I think both Crystal and Demidov got up in reading. They actually have Krasov, though, now on the second line right wing. Play with the Tsar and Reichel. Uh, defensively there, you got Korchinski, Morin, goaltending. Askarov's their new starter, and overall. So that's a big upgrade. Vladar there backing him up. And now year seven was a historic one for us, guys. Conor Bedard gets his first playoff win. Unfortunately, Chicago there loses in seven to Arizona Coyotes. I thought maybe they'd actually be on the second round, so... Uh, definitely, you know, a slow grow here for this team. Kind of similar to McDavid in Edmonton. Took them a while to, like, get going. Are you kidding me? Bedard, though, his first Art Ross trophy. Does not win the heart, though. Kaprizov gets that. I mean, still. We'll take an Art Ross there for Bedard. We'll see if he wins anything else here. Um, Ted Lindsay's Kaprizov. And then Risha Shard's Matthews. But still, Art Ross trophy for Bedard. Very cool. Okay, so Bedard finished the 107 points. Only reason he didn't get the heart trophy over Kaprizov is because Kaprizov there had a plus 62, which... I think is fair. Also, two in regards to Misha Shard, who's literally one goal back of tying Matthews, in which case they would have shared the trophy. So, uh, super, super close to getting his first Rocket um, in Central Division. There, you can see Chicago, one point above the Coyotes. Unfortunately, though, lost them there in the first round. Now, to start your eight guys, the first line still the same Crystal, Bedard, Demidov. The second line, though, has a familiar face returning to Chicago, Alex Debrinkit. 
32 years old now, played with Nazar and Reichel. Ludwinski, the captain, starting that third line with Krasov. Defensively, you got Muse on the top pair. Erzberg's up to an 86. Gold Tiny Scarrow's now a 90. Di Pietro backing him up. Alright, guys, it seems like Chicago can just not get it together. As you can see, again, they missed the playoffs. They're picking eighth overall, so you feel like enough top 10, top 5 picks, surrounded by Bedard. They should be able to do something. Our division rival there, Minnesota Wild, win the Stanley Cup. I'll take a look here and see if Adar got anything this year. McDavid again, win the Art Rush Trophy. Rant in there with another heart. Um, looking like, unless he gets a Selkie, probably nothing. Oh, wow. Are you kidding me? But Adar with his second Selkie Trophy. Okay, I spoke too soon. 94 points there for Adar with a minus six. And he's still taking on the Selkie Trophy. So, again, I'm not exactly sure. Could it be the face-off percentage, maybe? 57.2. Also, too, guys, as you can see here, the Blackhawks finished with 81 points on the year. So, not terrible, but I feel like they, you know, should be doing better at this point. And now, to start the ninth season, guys, they switched up the lines a bit. to bring it, Bedard, and Demidov on the first, with Reichel, Nazar, Crystal on the second. I mean, that's a very solid top six. Captain, four-line center. Still have a scare-off starting. This Chelios guy backing him up. And now, this is a pleasant surprise, guys. Look at the draft play results. You can see Chicago there picking 11th, but it's actually with the Boston pick. And the original Chicago pick's nowhere to be seen, so I think they actually... Got back in the playoffs again. Ottawa Senators there winning the Stanley Cup. It seems like every other year the Blackhawks are making the playoffs. So, do they win a round? They do win a round. Wow. They actually beat the South Kraken in seven. And then the Ducks in seven before falling to the Avs there in five in the Western Conference Finals. So, that's the closest Bedard's gotten so far to a Stanley Cup. McDavid there wins back-to-back -back Art Rush trophies. Marner, though, gets the heart. McCarr with back-to-back -back James Norris's. Marner also got the Lady Bing. And Comiso here, former goalie of ours, actually won the Vesna Trophy with the Leafs. Also got the William Jennings Trophy, so not sure why the Blackhawks let go of him. He had a huge year, 114 points, 55 goals. Are you kidding me? That's got to be, like, top five in the NHL. Um, literally, it's fourth or tied for third with Dreisaitl. One behind Marner for second. Uh, Dry Southern had 63 goals from the Marisha Shark. So, I mean, Bedard's up there with the best players in the game, unfortunately. McDavid's still in his prime. So, we're at the start of year 10 here, guys. The first line's now Dabrinkit, Bedard, and Reichel. So, they actually lost the Russian, who's a name I'm, like, forgetting right now. Um, Tyler Boucher, that they brought in to play with Nazar, was a 91. And Crystal, the guy that was also the captain of this team, I don't see here. So, maybe Bedard's finally given the C. Korchinski's gone, too. Okay, so, I mean, a couple 70s on the bottom. D pair, what are they doing? Look at this, guys. They still refuse to give Bedard the C. I don't know. I'm pretty sure this is like the last year of his contract. So, uh, we'll see if he leaves, potentially, whether it be trade or free agency. And now, check this out, guys. We're at the end of year 10. And finally, Chicago Blackhawks are Stanley Cup champions. It only took them a decade to win the Stanley Cup with Connor Bedard. Uh, we'll see here the playoff tree. They beat the Canucks in 5, Wild in 6. Flames in five before beating the Hurricanes in six. Never even had to play game seven. Now looking at the individual awards, Peterson, Art Ross Trophy, good for him. Same with the Hart. I am curious to see Con Smythe goes to Connor Bedard as you'd expect. Uh, does he get any other awards this year? That'd be pretty cool. Uh, nothing else, but I mean, Stanley Cup, that's most important. And as you guys can see here, he had 104 points on the year. One goal shy of 50 plus 20. It's still kind of crazy to me that this team won a Stanley Cup. Like, it was all offense. Uh, their best defenseman, I guess, was Melendike, who's 86 now. And in the regular season, the Blackhawks actually won their division as well. So just dominant throughout the entire year. Uh, they actually finished fourth in the NHL before winning the Stanley Cup. So a very good year. As I mentioned, too, I'm curious to see, is Bedard a pending UFA? No, he's not. Okay, so they extended him $14.5 million, which is what I said. He should have been getting paid. Just a one-year deal, though. Wow. Okay, so he could become a free agent or be traded. That'd be nuts. Now, this is kind of funny, guys. It's potentially Bedard's final season as a Chicago Blackhawk, and they finally give him the C. I don't know, like, what took him so long. Again, best player on the team, I think, by, like, the second year. Definitely deserve to be wearing that as soon as Tay's left, in my opinion. But I sure show what the team is looking like for Bedard's 11th season. He's got Dabrinkit and Reichel still on his wings. Blunden now in 89. Playing with Ludwinksy and Crystal. So they actually brought Ludwinksy back to the team after he left last season. Stripped him with a C, and now Bedard's wearing it. That's kind of funny. Defensively here, again, really no number one. Melendike's the best at 86. Bullies, they still have a scare off. It's a 91 now. And it might be Bedard's final season of the Blackhawks. They made it to the second round of the playoffs before losing the Wild there in five. The Wild doing really good in this, but uh, the Panthers actually won the Stanley Cup this year. Taking a look now at the individual awards. Jack Hughes there with the Art Ross Trophy. Basically just seeing if Bedard got anything. Has yet to win a Maurice Richard, and he still doesn't get one this year. And he actually was second in scoring on the team behind Dabrinka to a 96. But Dard there at 95, 46 goals. I mean, still a very solid season for sure. And you guys can see there in the Central Division, Nashville popped off, 123 points. Chicago in second with 100. And speaking of Dabrinka, guys, he actually retired this season at the age of 36. 1,200 points there in 1,352 games played. All right, guys, on the start of the 12th season, as you can see, Askarov there, still the starting goalie. And Carter Bedard did not lead the Blackhawks. He actually re-upped big time, 13.5 million for eight more years. 
wants to win another Stanley Cup with them. Found that first line of his buddy Crystal. Offensively, Melendez up to an 87, but really it's not that impressive. So we'll see if they can win another one here. And now Chicago made a deep playoff run this year, guys. Losing in five to the Flames in the conference final. They first out the Coyotes and beat the Avs in six. So... Uh, not too bad. We'll take a look here at the awards. Calgary Flames, of course, won the Stanley Cup. And Carter Bedard wins his second Art Ross Trophy. Very, very cool. Does he win his first heart, though? He does. Okay, so what a season for him. Uh, I'll take a look and see. Maybe he gets the Marisha shirt as well. Uh, let's see. No Selkie. It actually goes to Marco Casper. He gets his first Ted Lindsay and his first Marisha shirt. Wow, okay. So, yeah, what a season. He got three trophies for the first time. His second Art Ross. Very cool. Dang. Okay. So, yeah, he popped off 119 points there. 58 goals was a plus 36. And Crystal's the next closest player with only 81. I say only because, I mean, he was like 40 points back of Dar. The dude is just carrying this franchise. The next closest player in the league is actually his cousin, Gavin McKenna, on the Maple Leafs. He put up 99. So, literally 20 points back of Bedard. Um, in terms of goals there, Bedard at 58. The next closest is Ranton. And the Blackhawks actually finished first there in the division. Did they actually win the President's Trophy too? No, okay. Uh, the Devils did. I don't think the Blackhawks have won one yet. And I really quick, guys, I wanted to show you this. I'm pretty sure McDavid retired last season and I actually missed it. I checked this year and he wasn't there. So he kind of retired a little bit early at like 36 or 37 years old. But he still had the second most 100 point seasons of all time behind Wayne Gretzky. Also, too, guys, look at the all time point list. Mark Messier's in fifth with 1887. And McDavid's not too far behind him. I figured he had to be close with like that many 100 point seasons. As you can see, he had 1858. So. Literally 19 points there behind top five scoring all time. Now, to start with Bedard's 13th season, guys, he's still got Crystal on his left wing with Poirier there on his right wing. I was actually curious to look at Bedard's stats here. I was wondering, did he win two Selkie trophies? Okay, so he's got five star defense, 88 face offs, 93 stick check. I mean, those are pretty solid, you know, numbers there defensively. Shout out Brett Harrison, who's on the Windsor Spitfires. Defensively here, Melendez still there number one. Besides that, really don't have much. Liljigan's down to 77. Uh, scare out those other starting goalies. The so Blackhawks made the playoffs again this year, guys. Unfortunately, though, again, they lose the Minnesota Wild. And Calgary Flames are actually went back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. Take a look and see if Bedard also just kind of runs the league again this season. Matty Beneers, actually, with the Art Ross Trophy. Fair enough. So we'll see here his season. 97 points. I mean, that's still really, really good. Andrew Crystal actually popped off. Ty Bedard there with 97 points. Both of them are plus 26 on the season. So, yeah, you can see Crystal now is a 90 overall. Also, in terms of regular season, Chicago there, 96 points. Tied Nashville. I look for tired players this year, guys. Austin Matthews plays the entire career in Toronto. I'm sure Leafs fans love seeing that. Finished there with over 1,800 points and 1,555 games played. Very, very cool. Unfortunately for him, though, staying with the Leafs his entire career, but he didn't win a single Stanley Cup, which definitely sucks. Here's his 14th year, guys. You can see Bedard still first line center for the Blackhawks with Crystal and Poirier on his wings. Second line, they've actually added Mitch Marty, who's 39 years old now. Kind of crazy. Um, look at his stats there. Physical half a star. Just absolutely nothing. I mean, the dude's pushing 40. Skating's pretty low. Defensive awareness, though, still 91. He's actually still really good hands and shots. So we'll see how he does. Playing with Matthew Savoy. They paid him over $10 million. Eventually, though, they got no number one. This defense is pretty weak. Uh, goaltenders will still have a scare off though. He is 34, so he's getting older. Now this season, guys, the Blackhawks again make the playoffs. Unfortunately, they lose in the conference final. The Edmonton Oilers in five games. And then the Oilers actually went on to win the Stanley Cup without McDavid or Dreisaitl. So, honestly, pretty impressive. And we'll see you here looking at the awards, but Dart takes home anything. Jack Hughes there got the Art Ross, Veneers, Hart Trophy, McCarr with like, who knows, his fifth plus, James Norris. Bedard get anything, and he does not. Okay, so we'll see how his season went. 99 points on the air for Bedard. I mean, that's not too bad. Matthew Savoy comes in, puts up 89, so I uh, played quite well too. And the year after Matthew's retired, guys, Mitch Marner retires. I didn't even realize when I was looking at our team totals, Mitch Marner there had 87 points as a 40-year-old. Like, that is absolutely incredible. Like, look at those numbers he was still putting up. Late to his career. And another start of the 15th season, guys. As you can see, Crystal still on Bedard's left wing. And we've actually added Reihard's Grieva there. He's one of the German twins. It's going to get drafted in 2025. So that's pretty cool. It sucks, though. You know, we're breaking them up defensively. Still no number one. Also, two. I mean, what are they doing? We've got four 74s on this NHL team. It's not the preseason, I can tell you that. Ascaro there, still the starter. And at the end of the season here, guys, you can see the Blackhawks made it to the second round of the playoffs before getting beat up by the Canucks in six. The Bruins actually. Win another Stanley Cup. We'll see here if Bedard took home any hardware. And look at that. Bedard does win another Arras Trophy. Very, very cool. Does not get the heart, though. He gets uh, screwed there by Jacobson. And Korchinski gets to James Norris with the Lightning after leading our team. And look at this, guys. Frank Nazar, former player of ours, takes on the Consmite Trophy. McKenna there gets a Selkie, so his cousin could do it. He figured he could, too. And Bedard only gets the Art Ross Trophy, but still, I mean, nothing to complain about. And so as you guys can see here, Bedard finished the season with 113 points, 60 goals. Crystal there at 93. So... The guy that had the Marisha shard, how many goals did he put up? 
Um, you can see the next closest score, Jacobson, he had 68. Wow. Second overall pick, 2027. Not bad. And the Blackhawks there at 92 points on the season. And look at this, guys. They're checking out the retirement page here. Adam Fox retires the San Jose Sharks. Almost a point per game for his entire career as a defenseman. 40 years old as well. Uh, you can see Lucas Reichel there retires at 36. Exactly 1,000 points. Uh, sucks the Blackhawks couldn't hold on to him. Sider plays entire career at Detroit. I love seeing that. And I'll start the 16th season, guys. Crystal still on Bedard's wing, which I think is pretty cool. It's keeping the buddies together. They got Grieva there on the right wing. Savoy still second line center. Defensively, they're still, you know, lacking that number one. Goaltending wise, no longer have a scare off. They got a couple 84s though. All right, guys. So like I thought, that Chicago Blackhawks roster didn't look too good. As you can see there, they missed the playoffs and actually picked 10th overall. Dallas Stars there win the Stanley Cup. I'll take a look and see if Bedard though adds another Art Ross trophy to his resume. And look at that he does. Back-to-back -back Art Ross trophies. His third in five years. Basically just taking over the league at this point. He also gets the Hart Trophy this season. Korchinski there, back-to-back -back James Norris trophies. That's actually really cool. Uh, same with Benson, back-to-back -back Lee Bings. Everyone's getting back-to-back -back trophies here. And Bedard also gets the Maurice Richard. He gets the Ted Lindsay, and Jacobson gets the Maurice Richard. Still a very good season for him. And so as you guys can see, Bedard had 112 points on the season. Crystal there at 97, so he's continuing to tear it up with him. I'll see who's the next closest in the entire league. Gavin McKenna, again, his cousin there, 97. And then his buddy Crystal on there with 97. So, uh, kind of crazy. It's like Bedard and everyone close to Bedard running the league. As for the start of the 17th season, guys, and I can't believe this, they broke up the dynamic duo of Crystal and Bedard. They got Voro Baev here in 86, playing Bedard and Grieva on that first line. Savoy there, still second line center. Bottom six is like all 70s. I think definitely when you get like deeper into the franchise, especially, I believe I have the draft class and prospect quality both low, low. The talent pool definitely starts to dwindle because low low I think is just better for like the first 10 or so years. 84 starting goalie. I was actually curious too. One thing I haven't really looked at so far is just uh, Bedard's playoff stats because you know Blackhawks have been to playoffs a pretty decent amount of times. Uh, the last two times he was well over point per game. 21 and 12 is ridiculous. Uh, the time won the Conn Smythe Trophy 33 and 22. So yeah the dude definitely performs in the playoffs. We'll see if he can uh, win this franchise one more Stanley Cup before he retires. And right here guys I'm showing the lottery results. The Chicago Blackhawks missed the playoffs this time. 13th pick there so I mean, I don't know if it's going to help enough before Bedard retires, unless he does, you know, play till he's past 40. Uh, Boston Bruins, they're actually with another Stanley Cup. Really, really impressive. Can Bedard, though, win another Art Ross Trophy? No. Uh, Kosick there actually beats him out. Gavin McKenna with the heart's pretty cool. Benson with his third straight lady bang. His discipline must be like 99 and zero aggressiveness. Uh, does Bedard get any other trophies? He does not. McKenna, though, also got the Ted Lindsay. And as you guys can see here, at 34 years old, Bedard's still putting up 96 points, which is very impressive. Did have a minus three though, which we don't like to see. And now entering his 18th season, guys, Connor Bedard is still with the Chicago Blackhawks. I was actually curious how much more of his contract is left, and he's got two more years there. So 35 years old, this is the first year he could retire. I'm curious if he'll outlive the contract or not. Defensively there, Pandolfo 87, so they do have a number one defenseman. Goalie-wise, they got an 84. I feel like this team's probably not going to be a playoff team with a 76 on the second line left wing, but we'll see. All right, guys, so as Bedard's career is starting to come to an end, it looks like Chicago's again entering a rebuild. As you can see there, they're picking third overall this season. And you might saw there, the Philadelphia Flyers won the Stanley Cup. Individual awards here, no Art Ross for Bedard. We'll see if he takes them anything. Zach Benson, the fourth straight Lady Bing. That's gotta be like a record or something. But as you can see there, he still have a solid season, 87 points. Was a minus 15 though. Uh, still 88 overall, which isn't too bad. And look at this guy, his old teammate, Frank Nazar, calls it a career there. He actually retired there with the Boston Bruins. Also, his buddy, Andrew Crystal, retires as well. They were in the exact same draft. He was drafted eight picks later. And I didn't even notice Kevin Korczynski there right below him. He retired the Columbus Blue Jackets. So, kind of crazy. Like, three of the young star players on this team at the very beginning are now all retired. All right, guys. So, now to start the 19th season, you can see Bedard's down to 87 overall. And he's got Butt and Griva there playing on each of his wings. Second line, still got Savoy along with Vorobayev. Defensively, pretty similar. Like the fact that four of the six defensemen in the 70s is kind of crazy. 82 overall starting goalie. And now again here, guys, the Blackhawks are in the lottery. Unfortunately, only picking 12th overall. And as you can see there, the Leafs finally get their Stanley Cup in the year 2042. I feel like if Leafs fans have to late another essentially 20 years for a Stanley Cup, they're going to lose their minds. Matthews and Marner, long retired. I'll uh, we'll take a look here at the awards. I feel like Bedard probably didn't get anything because he's starting to slow down a bit with his age. And yeah, he didn't win anything. But we'll see how good of a season he had. Bedard here still over a point per game there with 84. I don't think he's had a single season yet under a point per game, which I think is very, very impressive. And yeah, guys, look at this. Just scrolling through here quick. Not a single season under 82 points. So basically, just like Sidney Crosby, he's never had under a point per game in his career. He is now down to 85 overall, though, and he's about to be 37. So... We'll see if we can keep it up. All right, guys, on the start of Bedard's 20th season, you might notice something's changed. He is no longer the Chicago Blackhawks. He actually left them in the free agency, so 
Uh, if you're a fan of another NHL franchise, all you gotta do is wait 20 years. He might sign with your team. Was hoping it'd be the Canucks, his favorite team growing up, but he actually signed with the Devils. And you guys might be wondering, where is Bedard? Well, I was wondering the same thing. I was like, he definitely didn't retire. For some reason, the Devils signed him to a $9 million one-year deal, and he's currently scratched. I tried simming like, you know, pretty good into the regular season. They're not putting him in the lineup. I'm not exactly sure why, so there's a good chance he might retire this year because of this, which kind of sucks, but I feel like if I trade for him or do something like that, it's kind of messing it up. And now check this out, guys. After not winning a Stanley Cup for 75 years, the Maple Leafs actually win back-to-back -back Cups, and look at that. They actually beat the Devils in the Eastern Conference Finals, so hopefully Bedard got some playing time. Otherwise, that would really suck. So take a look at the individual awards. I'm doubting Bedard's gaining at this point, but definitely have to check just in case. And yeah, no, he did not get any. Hopefully, like I said, he actually got some play time at least. All right, guys, so Noah Kosick here led the way for New Jersey with 106 points. He's actually a real prospect of the 2026 draft. Hopefully, like I said, Bedard got some playing time. There he is. 19 games played, they gave the legend. And he had 17 points. They averaged almost a point per game, and they sat him for 60. Are you kidding me? I uh, will see here if he played it all in the playoffs. And he actually did play every single playoff game by the looks of it. Slowed down a bit, only 10 there and 17. But like, what are the Devils doing here? And as you can see, the Devils actually had a very good season, 102 points. So just imagine if they actually let Bedard play. And look at this, guys. Even after being scratched most of the year, Bedard not calling it quits. And now in his 21st season, guys, Connor Bedard is playing second line right wing on the Edmonton Oilers. He's playing with Lack in there as 85, Geitz in 82. Uh, defensively, they have the Oilers have an 86, a couple of their 80s, goalies, they have an 80-83. Doughty wins the Stanley Cup in this year, but you never know. Again, Bedard's 38 now, so I feel like he doesn't have too much time left. Also, too, guys, look at this. Bedard signed a $10 million two-year deal with the Oilers. That is nuts. Uh, for an 82, like, even though it's Bedard, I definitely would not want to pay that. And look at this, guys. Are you kidding me? Connor Bedard and the Edmonton Oilers losing the Stanley Cup final to the Detroit Red Wings. I mean, if it had to be any team to beat Bedard, I would want it to be my team. So he came one game away from winning his second Stanley Cup. Literally, Oilers there go to game seven. Uh, first, they beat the Stars in six, swept the Preds, beat the Gold Knights in five. So we'll take a look here and see if potentially Bedard got any awards. Like, oh wow, are you kidding me? He got the Lady Bing. I believe that's his first Lady Bing. Yeah, he has not won one of those yet. And he gets it potentially in his final year. Did he take home any other hardware this season? No, he did not, but still uh, pretty cool. At 38 years old, after being scratched most of last season, the dude has a resurgence, puts up 106 points. Are you, come on, that is just unbelievable. Let's look and see his playoff stats there. Basically a point per game for Edmonton. The dude's sick. And with those 106 points, guys, Bedard only had six penalty minutes all year, so he took three penalties. I can see why I got the Lady Bing. Wow, and so I know why Detroit won the Stanley Cup. Cal Bergen with 122, Tiny Weiss, kind of a funny name, with 120, and Jay Lang fell there with 106. All play for the Red Wings. Like, I'd hope they win the Stanley Cup with that roster. And look at this, guys. It would have been such a Cinderella story if Edmonton Oilers won. They were the final wildcard spot in the West, and literally were one game away from being the juggernaut Detroit Red Wings with that stacked roster, relying on the 38-year-old Connor Bedard to, you know, come back to the NHL, essentially, after missing out on a year. That would have literally been something out of a Disney movie. And look at this, guys. Bedard's cousin, who's three years younger, retires before him, plays his entire career at the Leafs, averaged over a point per game. Fantilli as well, who should have went number two in the draft, actually retires as Chicago Blackhawk. That's kind of funny. Michael Meese is retiring with them. A lot of actually pretty big name prospects. And now look at this, guys. After the season he had, Connor Bedard got promoted from the second line right wing to the first line center spot, even at the age of 39 years old. He also went up from 82 overall to 87. He's now playing with 90 overall Pratt, 86 potties. So we'll see if he does even better. I mean, are you kidding me? Five Five star puck skills still, five star senses, four and a half star shooting, five star defense, 88 face offs, uh, skating still decent. The physical's not terrible, but obviously it has gone down. Like, this guy is gonna continue to play well. Like, we honestly, I don't know if he's gonna retire by the time I get to the 25 year franchise mode max. And this sucks, guys. Look at the lot results here. You can see the Edmonton Oilers were the best team to not make the playoffs, and the Red Wings there actually won back to back Stanley Cups. So, uh, good on them. I mean, last year they had the top three scores in the league. So, Clearly, they built a bit of a dynasty. Take a look at the awards again, just to see if maybe Bedard got another one. Um, are you kidding me? Back-to-back -back Lady Bangs after never winning one? That is kind of crazy, I guess. Just at his old age, with that low physical stat, not really hitting anybody, so, you know, not really taking many penalties. This is incredible, guys. At 39 years old, he puts up another 100-plus point season, 104. Now, he did have 18 penalty minutes, which is, like, a decent amount, but still, like, nothing too much, especially... We got 104 points. And he finished fourth in league scoring behind two Red Wings. And actually, this guy in Seattle had 112. And you can see right below him is this tiny white guy who's also on the Red Wings. Again, uh, that Detroit team is so, so sick. So uh, we'll get to retired players here. 39 years old. I think he's turning 40. Connor Bedard 
does not quit. He's insane. Wow. And now during his 23rd season, guys, I was looking at the Edmonton Oilers here. And as you can see, Bedard's moved on via free agency. And he actually signed with the Carolina Hurricanes. He's currently their second line center. Down to 85 overall. But still pretty good, I'd say, for a 40-year-old player. They've actually got a pretty nasty first line there with 291s. Uh, defensively there, it's okay. That's not Adam Fox. Of course, he retired. 87 goalie. Maybe he has one more chance at the cup here with this team. And now look at this, guys. The Carolina Hurricanes with Connor Bedard actually got beat by the Detroit Red Wings in the Eastern Conference Final. And the Red Wings win their third straight Stanley Cup. I mean, come on. Can you say Dynasty? How sick is that? Uh, looking through here at the individual awards, just trying to see if Bedard took home some more hardware just to kind of add to his legacy. I don't see any, though. And even at 40 years old, he still had 89 points on the year. So I still think that means he has never had less than a point per game during the regular season. Or actually, I guess... One time when they only played on 19 games, he fell two points shy. But other than that, every single season he's played above point per game. And even at 40 years old, Connor Bertard is not quitting yet. So like I said, we've got two years left till the franchise just ends. So hopefully he'll retire before then. And at the start of his 24th season, guys, Connor Bertard is still at the Carolina Hurricanes at 41 years old. You can see there he's 83 overall. Still has good puck skills, pretty good shot, 99 poise. Uh, defensive stats have gone down a bit, but they're not bad. Skating has been hit quite drastically, especially physical there, two stars. So uh, we'll see how he does this season. Maybe he can uh, win one more award. Oh no, guys, I just remembered we had to sim through that first season for Bedard to actually get drafted. So the franchise mode is now complete. Um, hopefully he retired this year. I'm not sure if he'll even show his retirement. I can't advance any more days. As you can see here, the Devils actually won the Stanley Cup this season, beating the Red Wings in the conference final. So the Red Wings almost went on to 4 feet, just like the New York Islanders. But in the Hurricanes, they actually got knocked out in the first round in seven by the Pittsburgh Penguins. I assume Bedard doesn't get any awards in this final season. Um, looking through, he'd be like the only guy with a picture probably other than the head coach. So no, he does not. And as you can see here, he had 65 points, 82 games this year. So the first time in a full season, he had less than a point per game. I feel like that's a pretty good spot to retire at. He's 41 years old, turning 42 later this year, minus 14 on the year, down to 83 overall. But still an absolutely incredible career for Connor Bedard, putting up at least a point per game until his final season at 41 years old. Not including that one year, the Devils scratched him for 63 games. Again, guys, played his entire career for the Chicago Blackhawks until the final five seasons. One year with the Devils, two with Edmonton, and then two with Carolina. Again, just looking at these totals here, like, so, so crazy. It was pretty much good for, you know, 50 goals throughout his entire prime of his career. I mean, even look at the totals down there. Like, that's just so nuts. 1,905 games played, 1,070 goals, uh, 1,181 assists, and then 2,251 points. As I mentioned, Conor Bedard, what a career. Looking at his playoff stats there, 179 games played, 199 points. Like, are you kidding me? Uh, he had four, five, six playoff runs there with 20 points as well. I feel like that's super impressive. And I just checked, guys, 199 points, puts him seventh all-time in playoff scoring, two back of Crosby and Yager, who are tied for fifth. So if his team's played a little bit better, he definitely would have been top five playoff scorer. As you guys can see here, he actually set the franchise record for points for the Chicago Blackhawks with 1,870. And he also had the most assists, games played, and goals. And then look at the entire NHL here. He actually finished the second most games played, two behind Matthew Kachuk. Uh, most goals there. He's actually six behind Alex Ovechkin. Are you kidding me? If he could have gone one year longer, he could have potentially passed Alex Ovechkin for the number one spot in the NHL goal list. It's kind of crazy too. Not only did Ovechkin beat Gretzky's record, but so did Bedard, Stamkos, and Matthews. Actually guys, well, I didn't realize there was a glitch. Stamkos didn't have that many goals. He still had 651, which is pretty respectable, but not third all time. Obviously having injuries turned off definitely helps with breaking records. Uh, most points, second all time, only behind Wayne Gretzky. He beat out Crosby there by about 240 points. Still 600 behind Gretzky, though. Um, assists, he's actually not in the top five. 50 goal seasons, though, he's number four on the list behind Ovi, Bossy, and Gretzky. 100 point seasons, he's number four with nine. So looking at all that, I feel like Conor Bedard would definitely go down as a top five player all time. It's an incredible career for him. Got to mention, too, the hardware. Calder Trophy, two-time Selkie winner, four-time Art Ross winner. Only won the Stanley Cup once, though, which is kind of nuts in, like, the 24 years we simmed with him. One Con Smythe, two Hart Trophies, two Ted Lindsay's, a Maurice Richard and two Lady Bings. It's also kind of crazy. The dude literally finished second all-time in most goals, but only won one Risha Shard trophy. Like, the odds of that gotta be so, so low, but still, what a career for Conor Bedard. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave that thumbs up. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, hit the sub button down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.